So now we made it to Transnistria, and just to make sure that everybody understands what's going on, I'm going to speak over the footage that we see here. So this first place is in the town of Bender, and what it was is a war memorial. There is many of those all over Transnistria, and this building right here is an old factory, which has the map of the Great Soviet Union on the side, along with um, yeah some imagery of the military power to show the, the strength of the Soviet Union. And here we are at the fortress of Tichina or Bender. Tichina is the Moldovan name and Bender is the Russian name, which is the name that is officially used now. It is an old fortress from the 14th century and has been important uh, over the centuries as strongholds between the Turkish forces or the Tatars as they were back in the time and Swedish forces and Polish forces and the local uh, Moldovan and Romanian forces. Uh, and as we can see here, there's a military base, a Russian military base right next door, which during the Soviet Union times meant that this fortress was actually shut off. And it, there's still a lot of factories and old buildings around it now, which makes it a bit hard to enter. And there we saw another memorial with a big tank and everything in front. And here we are driving through uh, the capital city of Transnistria, Tiraspol. And as we can see, it's not actually all that run down, uh, as you might expect from a Soviet uh, capital. That is still active. It's actually quite a nice city. Uh, and here we are at a small market that sells all kinds of uh, communist and uh, yeah Russian memorial, like um, all these military gadgets and like pins and magnets and uh, like clothing and hats and whatever. And here we have a statue at the main square of Tiraspol. Uh, I don't remember exactly who this guy is, but I'm pretty. Or, well, I don't remember his name, but like it's the founder of Tiraspol uh, that they have the statue of, and they have him multiple places. I think his name is uh, Potemkin, but I'm not sure. And as you can see here, it's a big open wide square, um, which is kind of nice, but there's not a lot of tourists here. Uh, just mainly locals and a few, very few tourists every now and then. And here they have the flags of the Transnistria. And uh, some memorial uh, for this from the Soviet Union times, uh, because this was during uh, the Victory Day. So there has been a lot of memorials and marches these days. And here we see the Transnistrian Parliament. And notice the flags on top here. The left one is the Transnistrian flag, and we have the Russian flag next to it. And in front of here is a big statue of Lenin, like a gigantic statue of Lenin. And this was actually built, um, the statue was built after the war, or like after 
the collapse of the Soviet Union. So this meant it was a freer time. So the Statue of Lenin is not as serious as it could have been, but more free, and he looks more like a statesman rather than a serious communist. Uh, so here we have another memorial. This is, um, um, yeah, a, a multiple part memorial basically. So there is a memorial for the Afghan War, the Soviet invasions of Afghanistan from a uh, nine. 1980 to 1989, and a memorial to the Transnistrian War from uh, 1990 to 1992, although the active war was actually only a few days in 1992, or a few months maybe. Uh, but there was like a cold conflict for, for two years, and a lot, a lot of people or soldiers died on each side, and that's what they have here, along with the Eternal Flame and uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Um, yeah, this is uh, another important building in the capital city this is the the main soviet so it's not the the parliament but it's another like political building where all the the soviets would congregate and they actually still do because transnistria still use the soviet system and again we have russian and transnistrian flags side by side and uh, yeah there's also russian flags in the street but as you can see, there's not a lot of like concrete blocks, but uh, actually fairly modern and colorful buildings all around here. It's actually surprisingly nice. And yes, now uh, the footage ended. Uh, so yeah, to, just to wrap up, like uh, people in Transnistria, as you might have been able to tell from some of this footage, they are dressed pretty westernly, like very modern and fashionable. So if you didn't like notice all the linen statues and the Russian flags, then this would actually appear like basically any other Western big city because it, it doesn't really show its communist side that much beyond the political uh, yeah, statues and political, um, um, what would you call it? Like, yeah, political like mem memorial or whatever. Uh, but it's important to understand that this is still a communist, um, like separatist unit of Moldova. It is supported by Russian government and it still has active military forces from Russia around. Um, and it still uses the communist political system. Um, it has a precedent and it has its own bank and it basically tries to be a, a like a self, um, a self-dependent unit basically so they try to produce everything themselves and also food and everything uh, but basically there is no hostility between the moldovan people and the transnistrian people they still see each other as like one people and basically the official name of transnistria is also the prenistria moldovska republika a lot but basically they still have moldova in the name because they still recognize each other as like being part of moldova it's just the the, the pressure from Krem the kremlin and from russia um to try to like have a constant state of like conflict that forces um, yeah these two peoples to have like a uh, a divide between them um it's also very easy to actually enter transnistria you just need to have your passport uh, and they will can check that, like some soldiers, Transnistrian soldiers. But you don't get a stamp in your passport. You just get an immigration card or, um, that basically gives you entrance for a couple of hours. Mine lasts for 10 hours. And that's it. Like There is no really big security check uh, when you come in like a normal car, at least. Um, and you can just drive around. And like the soldiers are actually very nice. They will actually uh, take pictures or allow... Uh, so tourists to take pictures they just usually won't like pose for you but like you can take pictures no problem and uh, they are not like hostile towards tourists or anything and neither is the local population they kind of like understand that they live in a communist theme park that is interesting to the outside world and they play along with that and don't seem annoyed uh, by the tourists um, but yeah it's definitely a very interesting place for sure and um, like one of the last truly communist places on earth where the system is still actively in use uh, and where Lenin is still very much uh, honored and uh, re revered. Um, so just to comment, so just to comment a bit more on some of these pictures that we're watching here. So this is one of the murals, murals in Tiraspol, and it shows the family unit, like a mother and a father and a kid. 
And because uh, Tiraspol is still very conservative, so they support a strong nuclear family. And here we see the, the factory again from the video. Uh, one side the uh, Soviet Union map and the other side like workers showing like uh, how proud and glad they are to work. And actually the text on the building says that my work, uh, my pride or something in that, that direction. And here we have again Lenin in front of the, the Dom Sovieto, the, the main Soviet building. And even though this is a, a, not sad, but like a communist place anyways, that you might think is not very Western, here we have a, a movie poster for Infinity War. Which is still at this point very new, even in the in the West, uh, but they still have it here with Russian subtitles. And um, another thing to notice, well, not to notice, but to know about this place is that it's not recognized by any country, not Moldova, not Russia, not anybody. Actually, the only entities that recognize this are the ones that we see the flags up here, which is uh, other small, like non-existent countries, uh, Abkhazia and South Ossetia which are like breakout republics of uh, Georgia, both of them. And another is uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, which is a breakout republic of Armenia. So all of them are like former Soviet breakout republics. And they all like recognize each other like independently, uh, or not, not independently, but like interchangeably. Um, so even though nobody else does, and like no actual country does, these four uh, breakout republics does. And here for the final picture, uh, basically, since this is supposed to be a communist Soviet society, everybody is supposed to be equal and there is no like classes or hierarchy to society. But some people are of course still more important than others and they are recognized uh, in public with these fancy posters uh, by doing like an excellent job for the for the Soviet Republic, the Soviet Union or like the country. Um, so that those are like teachers and you can see like there's a priest and there is like a big businessmen and uh, you also see like a, a cosmonaut over there uh, and people like that who has like done a, a supreme uh, contribution to the country through like a long life of uh, hard work and um, a great effort in promoting and uh, helping the republic basically so they get their uh, very fancy posters up here and this is right next to this uh, so dumb soviet um, but they are also like elsewhere around the country and around the city, uh, different people who are um, yeah, being presented for different reasons, but all again like because they supported and gave their lives for the Republic basically uh, through all the hard work that they did. So yeah, I guess that wraps this up and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and it, that it was informative for you and that you learned something uh, both about Moldova but also Transnistria here at the end. Uh, and yes, thank you for watching and bye bye.